Hi, I'm Catherine Purdy. I'm the author of The Upcoming Burning Glass, and here are some fun facts about me. My first kiss was on stage. It was in an acting class when I was 17. I had all these ideas of what a kiss would be, this warm and soft, beautiful thing. And it was cold and wet, and it, it, shocked, it felt like worms. And it shocked me so much that right in the middle of the scene, I went bleh, like right after he did it. And he just like stormed off to the other side of the room and the director and all my friends just busted up laughing and I spent the rest of the day just apologizing to him. I'm sorry, I just didn't know it was gonna feel that way. <laughs> I'm really lazy and I never wash off my makeup before I go to bed at night. So when I wake up, there's usually mascara coming down half my face. And so my sister and I always feel profusely ugly in the morning. So we like to take selfies in the morning and text them to each other. Well, you know, every, everything you can do. My brother Matt needed a kidney a few years ago and it was a long process to get me approved. It took three years and he almost died several times during the process, but I was really um, adamant about donating my kidney. During that really down time, I pulled out all of my journals and old writings from my childhood and realized it was kind of a shock to realize I'm a writer and I never knew it. I thought I was just an actress and I just started writing and I just had this huge dream. It's every actor's worst nightmare to forget a line of Shakespeare on stage and have to ad lib, but I did have to do it once. I was Rosalind in As You Like It and I'm supposed to give Orlando this token, this necklace, and I give a big speech about it. And as I was making this really dramatic walk across the stage, I forgot. I realized I wasn't wearing the necklace. So in my mind, I was like, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? I'm gonna have to ad lib Shakespeare. <laughs> and I, I don't know what I said to this day, but it actually sounded right. I said something like, remember me as I remember you, and somehow we will meet again. And I don't know, it sounded a lot more eloquent at the time. And I've, I've never forgotten a prop <laughs> since that time. So. I did get engaged to my husband after only dating for 10 days. I wouldn't ever recommend this to anyone else. Don't ever do that. Uh, but I, to kind of justify myself, I was mildly acquainted with him for a couple of semesters in college. I have one side of me that's, that likes to plan everything out and is very organized and the other side of me is completely impulsive and follows my gut and is very emotional and that's the side that totally <laughs> took over and we were like we're in love let's just get married and we were like even so cheesy that we decided that our that we'd get married on the day that was the exact day between our two birthdays because you know that makes no sense that's what you do when you're in love <laughs> i have nine brothers and sisters i have two older brothers I gave my kidney to my next older brother up, Matt, and I'm the third child, I'm the oldest girl, and that totally makes me the boss, because when you're the oldest of your sex in the family, it doesn't matter. I just was the leader. I got called bossy all the time growing up, but I grew up and realized it's okay for girls to be bossy. Girls can be the boss. It's a good thing. So I have some anxiety mostly to do with uh, driving in cars. The taxi in New York that I just went on just about killed me because I thought I would die several times. I didn't swear though out loud, but it does happen a lot. Yes, I do drive like a granny. All my friends make fun of me. I have to keep like a distance of 10 cars every direction away from me so that I have my safe giant bubble on the freeway. And if someone gets into that bubble, the curse words fly and there's just nothing for it. <laughs>